Let's talk about tension for a moment with Starling. The tension system is the knob here and the stalk. And turning the knob either direction will either extend or retract this stalk. So with the stalk pretty well in the middle of its adjustment range, we can see that the spring is here. The tension belt runs along here around this pivot and then up and over the small brake whirl and back down to the anchor on the other side. So we're going to observe it here and just notice that there is enough gap in between the tension belt and the bobbin on each side. If not, you can adjust the position of these real easily. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rotate this anchor in and out. And what you'll notice if you keep your eye on this belt here, as I rotate inwards, it drops down. And then as I rotate it back out, it comes up and comes taut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this anchor until it just lifts the spring and the belt off of the tube here so it's not sagging down. Um, sagging down a little bit is about as little tension as you can have on Starling. So you can see how this just there's no tension in that at all. all right. And so we rotate the anchor a little get a little tension and then from there we can turn the knob clockwise and increase tension and when we're doing this it's retracting the stalk and expanding the spring. So the spring is either fully collapsed meaning you can not see any little space in between the wires. As you start to dial it up it's going to be hard to see in the video but the spring gets longer and longer and this is kind of your normal working range for, for tension. Um, if you find that you've adjusted your tension so much that your spring looks like this, that it's literally twice the collapsed length, then that's about all the, the tension that you're going to get if you're using the small whirl. And so if you expand your spring to twice its length, then you need to graduate and you need to use your uh, rat tail and spring from your spares kit, uh, because it's longer than this one, and run it over top of the large whirl on the bobbin and back down. When you do that you'll have to shift these a little bit forward to kind of line up and match it up again. But by using this large whirl you're going to be able to develop a lot more tension and take up than the small whirl can provide. So if you're spinning real fine lace yarns, working higher speeds, lighter tensions, the small whirl is definitely for you. Um, if you get into a, a heavy plying job, something that just requires a lot of take up, a lot of tension, you see that you're expanding your spring, but you just really can't get the take up that you want, then that's when I recommend that you go to the large world. So I hope that explains things. Thank you.